Lindsay Warwick, we're here tonight at the Prince Charles Cinema for the 25th anniversary restoration screening of Willow. How are you enjoying it and what memories has it brought back to you from the filming? Oh, it's great to see the film again and, uh, and be able to share that with an audience in a cinema environment, uh, of which uh, you know, people haven't been able to do that for 25 years now. Uh, and also it's lovely to see the print restored so beautifully. I mean, it looks absolutely amazing. And, and I think it really does stand up well alongside films you know, released now, basically. Uh, uh, and uh, no, it's really been very, very lovely. And it's also been nice just to, to have people's questions and be able to answer things that you know, they've wanted to know ever since they first saw the film many, many years ago. Of course, we've seen you on the screen recently, reunited with Val Kilmer, haven't we, after 25 years? I mean, what was that like, being back together? It was amazing seeing Val again and, uh, you know, appearing with him on screen, as you say, after 25 years. But we seemed to pick up exactly where we left off. You know, it wasn't like we'd been apart doing other things at all. And, um, you know, we did seriously talk about, you know, Willow 2 and, uh, you know, Val would certainly be up for doing something else. And uh, so I think if if there were ever the chance, you know, the momentum is behind it now and, uh, you know, the possibilities are at their highest um, but uh, but who knows, the movie industry is, is not one that you can rely on in any way, so uh, we just have to wait and see. What would you like to see Willow doing now if you went back to make Willow 2? What do you think he'd be up to? Um, you know, on one side I'd like to think that he's now an accomplished sorcerer, but on the other hand, I'd like to think that he still struggles with it a little bit and hasn't quite got to grips with it. You know, I don't see him as being now the new High Aldwin of the village in any way. You know, I think he's always the kind of the underdog. And I think that's the, the beauty of, of the first Willow film was certainly that, you know, he, um, he, he, you weren't sure of whether he was going to achieve this or not and that's why the audience roots for him you know we always root for the underdog and uh, you know he was an unlikely hero uh, so uh, so yeah I'd like to think that he, he wasn't still very adept at magic and uh, but but nonetheless was was a happy man his kids might have grown up well they will have done by then and um, but then he does still kind of nip over to the castle and see Laura Dannon from time to time and keep an eye on man Bartigan. <laughs> And of course, the first film that we were able to see your face properly, wasn't it? What was that like for you as an actor? Well, it was, yeah, it was fun. I mean, it was, it was nice not to be stuck behind rubber and, and glue and all sorts of, of weird animatronics as I had been in numerous other films before that. Um, but I think the people who benefited the most from seeing me was, was the audience, you know, who couldn't deny that, uh, that these, the, these features look great on screen, uh, especially the big screen, you know. Uh, and... Uh, and, and as I said in the Q&A, you know, the film looks beautiful. It's been digitally remastered, uh, but, but I still look good and I haven't been remastered in any way at all. It's all natural. I love it. <laughs> now, we talked about Willow 2. Do you think we'll see any more Life's Too Short? Any more guest stars in there? Any more specials, do you think, in the future for that? Uh, I mean, I'd certainly love to do another special. Uh, uh, it's it's really down to time commitment from from Ricky and Stephen to write and direct and and uh, and produce these uh, these shows. So, yeah, who knows? I mean, they're so busy doing other stuff. It's it's like you know they have to like to do the special. We were talking about it a year before we did it, just so that the diaries could all line up. So uh, so who knows? I think it'd be nice to kind of dip back into Warwick's life every every year or so. What would you like to see TV Warwick up to next? <laughs> um, I mean, I, I think we'd like to see him be successful. I mean, it's a bit like Del Boy, isn't it? Only Fools and Horses for years and years. You want him to be that millionaire. And then when he was, I don't know whether I liked it. So maybe we don't want to ever see Warwick succeed. Maybe we enjoy seeing him trying. That's the, that's the fun bit, isn't it, for the audience? Enjoying seeing someone having a go. Uh, and not always doing that well. Again, it comes back to that idea of the underdog that we all like to root for, you know. Um, and that's that's human nature, isn't it? You know, we in this country certainly we we kind of we build someone up to success, and then we want to knock them down again. But we enjoy we enjoy the build up. And any more idiots abroad as well, because obviously that was so popular with you and Carl. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, everywhere I go, I get comments about idiot abroad and how much people enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed the trip. Uh, and, uh, and and hanging out with Carl most of the time. Um, so, uh, so yeah, who knows? I mean, I, I'd love to do some more because we only saw half of the world, not even that. Uh, but I don't know whether I can get Carl to come out of his house anymore. He's, uh, he's, not, the, he's not the best traveller in the world. I mean, he's getting very worldly now, but uh, I don't think it's something he enjoys uh, all the same. So, uh, so, yeah, who knows? Maybe we can drag him out the front door again soon.
And what do you think about the return of Star Wars as well? Of course, we loved you in mm. that. It's such a, a lovely character. It? What would you like to be if J.J. Abrams came knocking or calling? Um, I would like to be a Jedi, I think, this time. Or, or maybe... Maybe a villain, actually, because, you know, they're the characters you remember in films, aren't they? The, the baddies. So, you know, maybe there's some other little Sith lurking in a far corner of the galaxy that nobody knew about, you see. Because that's them all gone, isn't it? You see, at the end of Return of the Jedi, there's no more baddies. There's got to be someone else lurking, and I think that could be me, just living on a little planet somewhere on my own, just sort of practising my lightsaber yeah. action. I like it. And then, then, then Luke Skywalker kind of brings balance to the Force, tries to restore the Jedi Council and the Jedi Order. And who appears? Darth me. <laughs> to upset things. I love it. Joining the dark side. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Also, of course, you've been in Doctor Who recently. A huge thing that was amazing. Mm. A big year for Doctor Who as well. What was it like being in that Cybermen were back, 50th anniversary? How did it feel? Mm. I mean, being in Doctor Who is a career ambition for me, and now I can tick that one off uh, and uh, and retire happily. Uh, it was just an amazing experience. Uh, I mean, uh, to be asked to do an episode full stop was an honour. To be in one written by Neil Gaiman, uh, and then to be in one that features Cybermen, and to also have a really good character to play. You know, he was a, an interesting character, and I think he's he's left... There's enough mystery about him that's keeping the fans keen, because... You know, we didn't find out a lot about him. We know he's the Emperor, but he's quite mysterious, you know what I mean? And um, and that shock proposal to Clara at the end, you know, I'm sure that came as a, as quite a shock. But, you know, he's a lonely guy. And, and, you know, being the Emperor of the Universe, he could prove very useful to the Doctor in the future, couldn't he? I'm thinking spin-off. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking spin-off. You know, the Emperor's... What's he get up to? You know, it could be a whole thing, whole series. I'm loving this idea. I hope they're listening out there, the producers, and think, yeah, let's do that. Absolutely, and I had the coolest outfit as well, that little boiler suit, that kind of, all the gear. And then they give you such cool stuff. Like, I was, uh, at the beginning of the filming, they said, well, you, you should have, you can choose one of these watches, you see. And I was like, oh, wow. And they're all like little, you know, they look like futuristic watches, basically, so you get to choose that. And, and it's just those little details that make you feel like you're really there. And I, every day I'd walk onto the set and go, Wow, I'm here. And, you know, I didn't have any direct involvement with the TARDIS, but I had to go and touch it, so I touched the outside. I also snuck into the inside of the TARDIS when nobody was around, just kind of wandered around in there, pulled a few levers and stuff. Uh, she didn't get upset with me, so that was cool. But um, <laughs> it was it was a lot bigger than I thought inside. It was surprising. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, so I'm, I'm a bit of a geek at heart, so that was exciting. And finally, of course, you've got Pocket Warwick as well. It's been doing so well, hasn't it? What would you see for the future for that? Or the more apps for you, do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, Pocket Warwick was fun to produce. I mean, it was a, it was a long process to get the app out. Uh, but we'll continue to develop it uh, as, a, as an app uh, and maybe sort of venture into other areas with it, with that Pocket format. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's been fun. People are still downloading it, loving it. They'd love to run up to me and show me their Pocket Warwick. Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, I always get disappointed when I see a pocket work in a, in a state of dishevelment, which there's a lot of pocket works out there being neglected. So a pocket work is for life, not just for Christmas. I'm a chairman of a, a YouTube channel called The Multiverse, which is the home of sort of geek entertainment. And uh, there's a lot of great original content on there. A lot of it I'm in. Uh, but uh, tomorrow I start shooting uh, my series called Dwarves Assemble. Uh, which I'm in and directing and producing and shooting and editing and doing everything it's on. Just a bit busy then. It's it's pretty <laughs> ambitious, but it uh, should be a lot of fun. So uh, so yeah, subscribe to the Multiverse for updates and uh, to check out the other shows on there. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to seeing that work. Thanks so much for speaking to us. Cheers. Thank you.